We will finish up this morning with the remaining of uh, the notes that I gave you on biblical creation versus evolution. So this is the third installment. I emphasized to you uh, last uh, Saturday that in this material that I'm sharing with you, that I pray you will have an opportunity to share to students, to young people, uh, the proper role of science. So in this presentation that we are making, uh, we are using scientific facts to ascertain which model of origins is more probable so that the invested faith is intelligent and not blind. So again, I would like to say that in this presentation, we will let scientific facts speak as to which model is more probable, scientific, and believable. Because if you're going to use this material, your audience will be uh, not necessarily Bible-believing Christians. Many of them probably, like young people, had been exposed to worldly views like the theory of evolution. And for them, religion is not very much welcome. And if you come to them using the Bible to uh, prove your point that there is a creator God, you know, there is that bias in their minds that you have to overcome. So we will use scientific facts, okay, not theories, to show to them which model of the origins is more probable scientific and believable. I hope that this material will prove helpful to you as God opens opportunities for you to minister to young people and students so that you can plant in their hearts that faith in the Creator God instead, you know, of human ideas. Because once people believe that they have been created by God, then it's easier for you to lead them to a relationship with God. So we started with that last uh, Saturday. And so we started with a set of geologic facts that point to the flood. Uh, and I was saying that, you know, if there are a lot of scientific facts that point to th that there really was a great deluge, a great catastrophic event called a worldwide flood, as recorded in the book of Genesis, if science have enough scientific evidences to that, then, therefore, the account in the Bible about the flood is factual and true. Therefore, also, the rest of the events prior to that, including okay, the creation account, is also factual and true. So that is the value of this set of scientific facts from geology. And we will not discuss them again because we have already taken them up yesterday, uh, last Saturday. Let us just go over. So that's the geologic facts. You can go back to that and see that again in your notes. So aside from those geologic facts pointing to the flood, okay, we know that uh, in this discussion between biblical creation and science, you know, science, let's talk about science and the Bible. We said that the Bible is not a science book, but whenever there are references by the Bible to certain things about creation, you will find out that those references to creation are actually correct scientifically. Why is that? Because we said God created the physical world, and after that, he set laws to govern it. Therefore, whatever God says in his word about his creation, because he made them, are true, correct, and accurate. So what does science do? And these great scientific minds, and I'm thankful for them. I'm not against them. You know, I'm in the field of science as well before I went into the ministry. What science does is science discovers, analyzes, and 
the creation, but the laws of science that men have discovered are the very laws that God have dis- established to maintain order and sustain his creation. Therefore, even if the Bible is not a science textbook, any reference it makes to creation must be scientifically correct. So, this was the question we tried to settle last Saturday. Are there enough scientific facts to substantiate this? The one who made creation, what he says, and that is God, and what science have discovered and have established to be facts, do they agree? So that's the point I'm trying to say here. Are there enough scientific facts to substantiate this? So this is it. So the first thing we discussed last time was about the atoms as the building blocks of the physical world. And then, uh, as I have said, we will not discuss this. We have discussed this already, and this is already on reco- uh, recorded. And then we talk about the nucleus of the atom, which is actually I find very interesting. And so you read that note, part of your notes again. And then the fact about water, interstellar space. That's the third uh, uh, scientific fact that I'm posting here. And also the last the one in mathematics, you know, the principle of probability class. This is a very strong argument. Okay? That the theory of probability, you know, gives us, you know, a strong argument that it is impossible that everything just happened by chance. So you read that again. Okay? That's a very strong argument from mathematics. We ended up last time with geology, which is the branch of science that deals with physical nature, history, and the development of the earth. The problem class in geology is, uh, you know, because this is one field of science where most of the uh, proponents of evolution are actually uh, banking on. They have these two ideas. First is the theory of evolution. And then this geologic column. And they have this problem because they are actually in a circular reasoning. Okay? Evolution say, evolution is true because of the geologic column. But geologic column proponents say, the geologic column exists because of the evolution idea. So they go around in circles. Go to the findings from paleontology. Okay? This is another field of science, which is the study of prehistoric life through fossils. Here, evolutionists insist that the fossil records provides documentation to organic evolution. So the fossils that they have excavated or unearthed, these provide documentation to organic evolution. That's what they insist. Now, we have the right to question them. Do they? What, in reality, do the fossil records say? Do the fossil records say that, you know, evolution is true? So let us look into the facts class of what the fossil records say. Here are the findings from paleontology. Okay. The findings of paleontology is firstly not you know a slow progression of life forms from simple to complex because the fossil records show the sudden appearance of advanced life forms. Fossil record in instead reveal that life appeared abruptly in great diversity. So it's not, you know, in that orderly and progressive way, the, the fossils that they unearth showing that there truly was a process of evolution. But fossil records show that fossils are just discovered, you know, here and there, everywhere. And it seems that, you know, there is this advanced Organisms or life forms that just appear abruptly and in diversity. So there is great diversity, 
complexity and abundance without any ancestors from which to evolve there. There is the absence of life forms in the lower two-thirds of the Earth's crust called the Precambrian period. Then suddenly, in abundant numbers of advanced forms are found in the next sedimentary deposit called the Cambrian period. If evolution is true, there would be traces of their evolutionary ancestors in the pre-Cambrian period. Now, these are biological terms or paleontology terms because they have labeled the different strata or sedimentary layers of the earth according you know, to uh, uh, this age that they say. And supposedly, at this certain uh, period, you can find these fossils. And then the next period, you, know, you will find these fossils. But they found out, you know, that instead of, you know, a progressive change from simpler to more complex, there's just, you know, the sudden appearance of more complex organi life forms. And then when you go to the next strata, it's they are what they discover are not consistent with what they claim or expect. So there is sudden appearance of advanced life forms. Some more here. I'm sorry. Number two, the permanence of kinds. Fossils of animals and plants found in supposed oldest rocks are the same compared with their living counterparts, even the simple bacteria. You see, class, if evolution is true, you know, the Bacteria, which is a simple cell, the sim, as very simple organisms. If the evolution of is true, then we have no should have no more bacteria now, and they should have evolved in more complex organisms. But that is not true. Kinds of organisms are permanent, okay? and the fossils of an organism way back years are the same, they also have the same uh, structure now. The kinds of organisms that they are studying have permanence. Because this is what God has established, class. You know, God said the land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds, and God saw that it was good. Uh, here again, 124, and God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. Livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so God designed that he created a living organism, either vegetation or an animal. Okay. But these are to produce their own kind. They are not supposed to evolve into another life form. Di ba sabi natin? Yung, yung manga ay dapat mamunga ng manga. Yung aso, pag nanganak ang aso, ano yung anak ng aso? Oh, sagutin nyo nga ako. <laughs> ano anak? What is the uh, the offspring of a dog? <laughs> Good puppy, all right. It's a puppy, but it's still a dog, <laughs> right? <laughs> Why would they say? Because God established this natural law. Each will produce its own kind. That's why a human being will produce its own kind. Now, science have created hybrids, but do you know the characteristics of hybrid? Hybrids do not reproduce. Say, this is actually one area where I was interested in before when I went to our trip in uh, in Paik, you know, the Philippine National Atomic Energy Commission, and we saw there, you know, the area where they create isotopes and they create hybrid. Uh, during that time, uh, creating hybrid plants was uh, really uh, booming. And I saw they created, you know, the hybrid seeds of corn and the hybrid seeds of, of rice because they say the hybrid rice, you know, have more, uh, uh, I mean, resistance to water flooding and, uh, and, and wind. So they created hybrid uh, uh, species of plants. 
And I really was interested there. That's why I really wanted to study there. <laughs> but the thing, class, is hybrid uh, plants, they do not reproduce. They're only good for one crop. Because, you know, they have already interfered with the original thing that God created. And that will not reproduce its own kind. Only that which God has created reproduces its own kind. Now, isn't this great, lass? The Bible really is pointing to us that there is a God creator. And what he established in his words are still there. Another about paleontology is the absence of transitional forms. Now, this one I really find funny. There is the absence of transitional forms. This is what we call the missing links. If life has been in continual stream of transmutation from one form to another, then we should expect to find, not found, not sorry for that wrong spelling, to find fossils of the intermediate stages between the different forms. But no fossils are found that can be considered transitional. These are the missing links. So look at here. Just I simplify the terms here just for you to see this. And let's have fun. Okay. Between the big jump from the dead matter to living protozoans, you know, they say hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, somehow, somehow by chance, you know, the simple-celled animals like the amoeba and the protozoa, they were formed. I don't know how non-living uh, organ uh, matter can produce that. And then, between the gi gigantic gap from one-celled protozoan to the complex metazoan, vertebrate there are no links there are no transitional forms they still can find the protozoans or their amoeba but there is no in between to that to the next level of organism there is no link between invertebrates and the vertebrates now do you know your invertebrates what are invertebrates okay, let's have a review of your biology <laughs> Okay, answer me. What is an invertebrate? No, okay, skeleton. That's good. Invertebrate. Vertebrates meaning, you know, living organisms that have skeletal system, the bones. Right, good. So there are no fossils. Probably, if you will find one, it should be a living organism that have jelly. <laughs> that have jelly for its skeleton. <laughs> but they don't find that. Here. There is no link between the fish and the amphibian because that's the order. So I call that the fishbian. Have you found a fishbian? <laughs> there is no link between the amphibian and the reptile. Okay. So we will call that an amphitil. <laughs> Jellyfish. <laughs> okay. Have you found an amphitil? How about the link between the reptiles and the birds? Then you should find a rep bird. Well, probably Hollywood have created, you know, some crocodiles that have wings, right? But that is the product of Hollywood. But there are no fossils to substantiate that, right? Number eight, the link between birds and mammals, because that's the next order. I can't believe this. Birds to mammals. Uh, the Archaeopteryx, okay, it's hard to pronounce this word, was offered. You know, they have certain fossils that they found and they tried to assemble, diff you know, uh, parts, pieces of fossils and assemble them together and they would... <laughs> All right, yeah, these are funny combinations too. So I really want you to have, isn't it fun, right? But you know what they offered, you know, so every now and then they would come up with a living organism or a, a life form from fossils that they would assemble together and they would come up with, uh, you know, a proposal. Oh, this is it, this is it, this is a missing link. And then later on, as they find more fossils, they would say, oh, no, no, it's not that, it's not that. So they have found that. They haven't found that link between birds and mammals. 
And of course here, the link leading up to men from an ape-like ancestor. Now they have proposed, you know, how, you know, how men, you know, have grown from that ape-like structure and gradually man straightened up and now we have this erect human the homo sapiens you tell me how do you feel about saying that your ancestor is the ape you like it would you welcome you being called being uh, being they would introduce to you here is this certain guy his great 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 grandfather is an ape will you welcome that of course no findings <laughs> from biology uh we said that biology classifies uh life forms into two well, the plants and the animals because the living world is full of innumerable examples of living forms. The plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. And, you know, you, sometimes we view this uh, geograph, uh, what is this channel? Uh, in, the telev in the television where you, they, they display, you know, different flowers and plants and trees, varieties of species of the animal kingdom and of the plant kingdom that we haven't even seen and you really are amazed and you say, wow is there such a thing okay so if you look at the living world of plants and animals because there are so innumerable examples of ingenious design that are purposeful yeah that's national geographic thank you incredible inter relationships among the different species of the animal and the plant kingdom now these behaviors could not be just adaptations as what evolutionists would reason but they testify to the reality of a super intelligent creator and designer number one is extraordinary design okay. this is our, so many times for me class just look into biology alone there just be so so much evidence pointing to somebody who designed everything because there is so much extraordinary design look at the different animals the different flowers okay some of them look funny but I mentioned, I want to put in here one extraordinary design is our human eye. The human eye class is a very complex and sophisticated organ, which is very hard to think how it came about through the step by step, step by step, trial and error evolutionary process. Okay, post it up here, you know, the structure of your eye. Look at that. So many nerve endings and, you know, the process of just how the eye perceives light or how the eye whatever just so complicated it's one of the most complicated sophisticated organ of the body the eyes of and how can it be a product of evolution somebody designed that another thing about in biology class is symbiosis symbiosis is the living together of two or more organisms of different species in mutually beneficial relationships. Okay. Like the symbiosis of fishes. Do you know that there are large fishes that are dependent on the tiny fishes? These large, probably like whales or other huge fish, they need the tiny fish to clean their teeth so that they they will be uh, strong enough to get their prey on the other hand these tiny fish get their food and nourishment from what they get from you know they pick from the mouth of this bigger fish because they are so tiny and they're always a prey to uh, other uh, predators out there in the open the sea so they exist they benefit from one another now you tell me who taught them to do that okay. 
That is the symbiosis between organisms, the same species. Another area in the findings from biology is the migratory instincts. Especially birds, for example, have been found to be equipped with navigational tools in their brain that enable them to fly along miles of unfamiliar land, especially in places where there are changes in, in seasons, when it's time for before winter comes, they have to go to other places where, you know, they uh, they cannot withstand the winter. And so birds would migrate. They, they would know somehow, you know, it's time for them to migrate. And how would they know how to travel? How would they find the right places for them to migrate to? Thousands of miles through unfamiliar land. They don't have the, uh, what do we have now? Is the gadget that we have? We don't have that. But God has given them that tool. Another one is visual beauty. Visual beauty, guys, is something that evolutionists cannot deny. Many organisms exhibit beautiful, colorful patterns and architectural architectural design on their bodies. How did these develop? By chance? I pulled down from the internet this flower. This is not plastic. You know, I thought the first thing I saw, oh, this must be a plastic flower. Because you can buy some pl plastic flowers uh, that are similar to this. But uh, I do not know really what this flower is. But look at this, class. Is that amazing? It's just one flower with all these colors. So probably after our class this morning, you go into and surf through the internet, you know, even just focus on flowers alone. You will be so amazed with this. So much visual beauty of creation. Wow, somebody designed them. And another in biology is mimicry, where one organism imitating another. For example, among insects, there is not mere adaptation. You know, they mimic because some insects, class, uh, especially if they're tiny, they adapt to their surroundings, or they mimic sounds, or they mimic the colors of their surroundings for their protection. And you cannot imagine how these tiny things are there to be able to protect themselves. You see, God has taken care of everything of its creation. And surely he takes care of you and me. All right? So let's move on. Uh, what's happening here? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, let, me, let me open up again my notes. Some more here findings from by oh we have this ready okay so that's it findings from biology as I was saying class some um, from biology in biology alone you will have thousands thousands of testimonies to the beauty of what God has created now let's move on here are two things there are things that science has to contend with. Meaning, you know, no matter how intelligent people are, like Einstein, but science have their own problems. There are things that they cannot yet settle and still remain unsettled. Okay. Here, a fact that science must face, that through the years it was proven that scientists could make mistakes. Do you believe that? Is it true that science and scientists, because you know what they conclude are based only on experimentation and further experimentation and verification 
until they say, okay, this is now what is right and this is what it is. And then later on, they discover more data, they discover more evidences, or say in archaeology, they, they unearth more findings and fossils, and then they go, oh, I think we were wrong. Okay. They make some mistakes. It can, that it, they can make mistakes, right? You know, my course is chemistry, I told you, and we had been trained. We are supposed to have a thesis before we make a, we can we can graduate. And for us to be able to establish, okay, uh, what we propose as our project study, we have to do several experimentation, several trials and trials until we can finally say and solidly say, okay, this is what it is. But a lot of times that could be not yet final. Okay. So science can make mistakes. And one big mistake that science had in the past is that they said that earth was flat. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that God said, I hang the earth in space. It's not flat. So what is happening now in the scientific world is that recent discoveries prove previous claims as wrong. Couldn't it be possible that the proponents of these theories of the origin of the universe were also wrong? Rightly so. Secondly, a fact that science admits. As to the question which theory is correct at this point, they could not give an answer. You ask a scientist, and if that scientist is just honest enough and truly scientific, if the evolution idea is a fact, ask him, and what will be the answer? Their answer should be, that up to this point, we cannot give a definitive answer. More evidences are needed to support any of the theories. New theories may be developed, but the final tests of the theories, no one will ever witness. Therefore, these theories are still theories, and as long as they are theories, the truly scientific mind should not accept them as facts. Okay. Here are other things that science has to contend with. Defects of evolutionary mechanisms. We found that already in biology. Like these three ideas. Lamarckism class is a theory of inheritance of acquired characteristics. This has been disapproved by the discovery that change can only happen through alterations in the genes and their contained DNA. Because uh, the theory of adaptation, one organism by adaptation and mutation, they become another living form. But that has not been proven. And for you to do that, you have to change or alter the DNA. Because the DNA is that which gave specific characteristics to specific living organisms. And I think this is the reason why there is so much now contention over the COVID-19 virus, the mRNA, and that they said uh, that how some of the virus, uh, some of the vaccines are prepared by, you know, and I don't want to go into that at this point in time, you can make your own research class. Because your DNA is your identity. That's why in, you know, there are somebody who claims that this child is his, you know, their DNA must be tested. Or if somebody claims, you know, somebody comes up to you, you know, I am your child. <laughs> they say, what? How come you're my child? Okay. I don't even know you, okay? So for your, for, to prove that, you must have to have DNA testing. This has been not proven. People have to interfere with the DNA. And you know, my, my personal, personal conviction always is, is anything that man will do to interfere with what God created is destructive. God 
created the nuclear bombs and it's very destructive because they altered okay, the proton, the nucleus of the atom. The next is Darwinism. This is the theory of natural selection or survival of the fittest. This is Darwin's theory. They can't answer the question why the lower forms of life are still existing, such as the simple bacteria. Okay? If it is survival of the fittest, how come the bacteria is still surviving? Sometimes bacteria is stronger than humans. <laughs> you get amoeba in your stomach, you can die. You can get so sick. Okay. So who is more fit to survive? The bacteria or the human being? See? And then the mutation theory, which states that new species are, are a result of favorable, favorable alterations in DNA. But modern science has proven that only new varieties are formed not new species. That is why the term that they are using even in COVID-19 is a new variant. Okay? It's COVID-19 variants. It's not a new virus because mutations, which is a result of alteration of DNA. So is that giving you an idea how these variants can be produced? They produce variants or varieties of the same organism by making an alteration in the DNA. I don't want to go into the topic of COVID-19. <laughs> Let's do that in another forum. Okay, so these are the things that science has to contend, class. You know, sometimes we in Bible-believing Christians are on the uh, defensive side. You know, if you are wise enough and you know these things, you can put anyone who is a proponent of evolution to be on the defensive side. And so here are these tools that I am putting into your nine hands. So the conclusion here is that creation points to creator, which idea to explain the origins of the universe is more scientific and more probable that I've tried to do to you class is have given you scientific facts to prove to show that you know whatever the Bible says about creation are in agreement because you know God has is the person who can rightly speak about what he created and science only discovers them. Facts of science. Okay? Established facts of science. They agree with one another. So, creation points to a creator. That's the conclusion. And sadly, this is what we read in Romans 1, 18 to 22. Why there is this going on contention between Biblical creation and evolution. Look at this. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain. How did God make it plain that he has created the universe? Look at verse 20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature had been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. You look at the creation, the varieties, the design, and all that I have just spoken to you in, even in biology. They all present to you Proof that there is a wise creator, God, and people are without excuse. But what people try to do and insist, verse 21, For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened, although they claimed to be wise. They became fools. So two things are seen in this passage, class. Here God is revealed through the things he has made. 
And around us is an abundance of evidences in nature that there is a creator God. We should take time to look at creation around us. And you will be awed at how they point to a creator God. And knowing more about God's creation is a gateway to know God more. Just look at creation. Number two, men who suppress the truth about creator God have become darkened in their minds. And professing themselves to be wise, they have become fools. In Psalm 14, 1, 53, 1 says, The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, their deeds are vile, and there is no one who does good. So what is the conclusion here, class? Psalm 8, 3. This is how we are going to end this. Can we just declare this and declare this? If you want to unmute yourself, just join me. It's okay. Let us not, we may not sound very nice, but it's good to make this profession of faith. Okay. Psalm 8 3. Let's do this. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. Oh, Lord God Almighty, who is like you? You are mighty, O oh Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule over the surging sea. With its waves mount up, you steal them. You crush Rahab like one of the slain. With your strong arm, you scattered your enemies. The heavens are yours, and yours also the earth. You found, founded the world and all that is in it. You created the north and the south. So our response to class is this. Let us worship the creator God. Amen. I have a few more verses here perhaps that we can read again. Okay, let us look at this. This is what we should do. Look at that. Let's read this again. Read this with me. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Or with the breath of his hand he marked off the heavens? Who has held the dust of earth in a basket? Or weigh the mountains, the mountains on the scales, scales and the hills, the hills in a balance. Do you not know? Do you not know? Have you not heard? Not heard? Has it not been told, not been you, told you from the beginning? Have you not understood? Have you not understood? Yes, it was earth was found. He sits in the circle of the earth, of the of the earth. and his people and are like grasshoppers. Like like he stretches out, he out, out the heavens like a canopy, spreads them out, spreads out the mountains like to live in. So lift up your eyes, lift up your eyes to, to the and look to the heavens. Who created all this? All this? Or he who brings out the brings out the stereo from the one by one. one. And it calls for it calls them, for them, them, each of them by name. Can that God can call out each of those numerous stars and one of them is like like them missing. And because of his great power and mighty strength, no one of them is missing. So, here, Jacob, or put your name here. Come on, as you read. So, why do you blame Zenaida? Put your name. And why do you say, Zenaida, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the everlasting God, Amen. the Creator of the heavens and the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can find. His understanding, and he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. And even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. Stumble and fall. But, but those, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. And they will soar on they wings soar like eagles. Like they will run and not grow weary. They will, and they will walk. They will walk. 
and then not the earth. It's powerful, creator of the heavens and the earth, is the one who is also our help. We thank God for creating us. Amen. Yes, how great are you. That concludes our lesson this morning, class. And if you have a chance, as I have said, share these notes to people. Beautiful experience to once more make that solid confession that God has created us and our lives are in His hands. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.